Hey guys, Kuk Colin here, and I just got finished watching Monster Musume. A little piece of my innocence will never return. But you should totally watch it if you're a pervert, you'll love it. You have to be a special kind of pervert, though. You have to be... <laughs> oh, God. I can't believe I'm even saying this. You do have to be, like, a really open kind of pervert. Like, you have to have weird fetishes. Because this one is all... Like, it's called Monster Musume. Monster Daughter, Monster Girls. It's all about monster women. In the first episode, what we deal with is a Lamia, which is top half human, bottom half snake. Like, you can imagine in real life that would be terrifying. And the animated form ain't too bad. Well, hell, actually, in the animated form, it's damn impressive from the top half up. And the thing about this show <laughs> is they do it in a really funny and sweet way. Like, you'd think... Bits of it just feel like they come straight out of hentai, to be honest. There are bits of it that are just... Like, the main plot line is, Oh, hey, there are a bunch of monster girls in our world, and suddenly they're being friendly to us and are coming into our world. Lol. Like, there's no real plot line there. That's the plot ripped right out of a visual novel or a hentai. That is not a plot that actually gets written out for, like, a proper story. And this wasn't a proper story. It was a bunch of short online comics like normally they were about a page each of funny little comics and then they ended up getting like seriously loved and so they turned it into a proper manga and i'm so shocked the manga became an anime now i never read the full manga i read some of the short comics the reason i decided to pick up this anime is because i actually did fall in love with a couple of the characters they were really sweet and cute and that's one thing the show is really good at they take creepy bits of the animal girls and then they decide what kind of character they're going to build off of it like you've got the one that i really always remember is arachne she needs to suck blood from humans to keep her nutrient level up she can get it in slightly different ways but her favorite way is to just suck the blood out of humans and obviously she's got web so they turned her into a bit of a dominatrix kind of character she likes tying people up and stuff like that very kinky. So we've got Alamia, <laughs> who of course, she's got the giant snake tail. Her thing is like cuddling and wrapping around people, coiling. She loves warmth. And they've blended that into her character just by making her super lovey-dovey. Like she's the perfect waifu kind of character. She goes around calling our main character darling all the time in a really, really sweet way. And yeah, that's all I really have to say about this show. Like, there's going to be a ton of ecchi. You probably shouldn't even be watching the review, let alone the anime, if you're under 18. Because it does get seriously far with the ecchi. Even though most of the girls only have half a human body, they still go far with the ecchi. But what they also do is mix in a lot of comedy based on the craziness. For example, in this episode, the main guy had to question how in the hell a Lamia wears underwear. He found out. I'm not even going to talk about it. It's just, he found out. <laughs> it's in there. Go watch the episode if you want to know how a woman with half a snake body wears underwear. I don't want to explain it. I watched it. That was enough. <laughs> it was still funny as hell. And basically, he's not allowed to have sex with them either. I'm just going to throw that out there. This will never actually get to the level of 18+. plus. It will always stay at a nice 15+, plus if you're in England or... NC-17, I think you guys have in America. It will stay around that level. It's seriously etchy, but not hentai. <laughs> it doesn't quite cross that level. And I love the hell out of it. It's funny. It's cute. In this episode, our girl was so cute and everything was so happy for her. And then out of nowhere, these dickheads come and start taking the piss out of her and really make her feel bad and make her annoyed and she could probably kill them with one slap of her massive tail. But if she actually hit them, then she'd get deported. Because the interspecies thing says the two different species can't hurt one another. They can be dicks and take the piss out of each other all they want. But if one of them hits another, they go in jail. Or getting deported in the case of the animal girls. So, it was up to our main guy to punch the douchebags in the face. And he did, and it was a boss moment. He was such a beast. And it was the most well-deserved punch since Ori Monogatari episode 1, where Takio took out the molester. Really, 
was so looking forward to that punch. It had to happen. It had to happen. So this was a great first episode. It basically showed you exactly what you're going to get from the anime. A ton of ecchi, a couple of feels, and a lot of sweetness. Because that is what you're going to get. And obviously, this anime is not going to be for everyone. It will actually gross you out if you have a fear of certain animals and species. And it will also kind of make you go, what the fuck? When certain things are touching up our main dude. For example, if you can't stand Snake, in this episode you would have probably be shuddering the whole time. Personally, I could take it. I enjoyed this episode. I'm looking forward to more of this. The cute moments are great. The ecchi moments, it's my type of ecchi. Like, I keep saying to people, if a show is supposed to have a plot, they should keep off the ecchi. If a show is about the ecchi, that's fine. Do the ecchi as much as you can. I love High School DxD. I love High School of the Dead. Why? Because they know. Their ecchi shows. Their main thing is ecchi. Their storyline comes second. In this one, the storyline comes second. It was a shit ton of ecchi, and then the storyline started going. That's the kind of ecchi I want. I don't want ecchi that just gets thrown in to say, please buy our anime. We know our story was shit, so please just, you know, buy the DVDs for the boobies. I hate that. You either make a story, or you make ecchi. This one is an ecchi with a little added bonus story in between. That's how I like it. So this has Kukulin seal of approval. Thanks for listening, guys. Leave your comments down below. Let me know if there's any animal-type girl that you like. I mean, everybody loves the Neko Mimi. But what about any other animal type? <laughs> oh, God, that's such a weird question. Still, do let me know. Like if you enjoyed this review, and subscribe if you haven't to see more. And I will see you guys next time.